Hi everyone, welcome back to My Parenting Way. My name's Katie and today I'm going to talk to you about babies who suffer with hay fever. What is it? How do you know it is hay fever and what you can do about it? So here in the UK, we are finally getting some good weather. But unfortunately, with that means that many of us are suffering from hay fever symptoms, which is horrible. I personally have never suffered with hay fever. I'm very lucky in that respect. But my husband definitely, definitely has. And I know how horrendous it can be. Now, I was going to film this video outside in my garden um, just because it's now summer and I wanted to add to the atmosphere. But true to form, it looks like it's about to tip it down. Uh, not proving my point about the good weather. So let's crack on and talk about hay fever. What is it? So hay fever is an allergic reaction to pollen. So in babies, it's actually really difficult to know whether it is hay fever or not because they can't tell you how they're feeling or what's the problem. So quite commonly, hay fever is confused with the common cold. So I just thought I'd explain the difference between the two just so you get an idea of what you are actually treating your baby with so you don't unnecessarily medicate your baby with something like paracetamol when he or she doesn't actually need it. So first of all, the timing. The common cold usually only happens around winter time when our immune systems are particularly low, but it can happen obviously in the summer as well. Hay fever, however, only has a specific time of year that it rears its ugly head, and that's because of the pollen count in the atmosphere and in the air. So it depends on what type of pollen you are allergic to. There's three types. There's tree, there's grass, and there's weed. And depending on what you're allergic to, depends on what time of the year your hay fever symptoms start. But generally, hay fever symptoms tend to hit the highest around March to September every year. So what's the differences in the signs? So with a cold, you commonly have a thick yellow or green mucus come out of the nose. Um, and that's because of your body's trying to fight this viral infection and it causes this horrible, disgusting discharge from your nose. Whereas hay fever is slightly different in the sense that it is more clear and watery. The other classic sign of hay fever is of the red puffy eyes that you get when pollen enters the eye and actually it can cause so much irritation it can cause conjunctivitis in the eye which is where the eye gets all gunky and the eyes stick together and it can be really painful and itchy. The different symptoms are a little bit more tricky because you can't ask a baby how they're feeling or what they're feeling. So but generally speaking, a common cold will make you feel achy. Sometimes you have a fever. It, again, it will have the obvious snotty nose. You might have a cough. So quite commonly with a cold, it will be a wet chesty cough as the mucus goes down onto the chest. Hay fever in comparison doesn't generally have a cough, but if it did, it's usually a dry one, and that's because the throat tends to be a little bit itchy. Both, however, do have the classic sneezing symptoms and the snotty nose, which is probably why they get easily confused. Finally, babies often also suffer with a bit of eczema when they also have hay fever, which is another classic sign of allergies in your baby, and quite often the two coincide. Finally, the difference between a cold and hay fever is how long they last. So a cold usually ends up burning out, you know, over a maximum two weeks. And over those two weeks, a cold would generally start getting better. In fact, a cold generally starts to get better after about two or three days. Hay fever, however, does not get better. And in fact, over time, you might find, depending on the day, there are some major flare outs and you feel absolutely rubbish compared to the day before. And the next day, you actually might feel a lot better. And it's a complete luck of the draw, depending on the weather, the pollen count, you know, where you're going for the day. But um, regardless, it, it might change. So how do we manage these symptoms for our baby, considering they can't even tell us how they're feeling, you know, whether they're feeling better, whether their throat's hurting, their eyes are itching. And it could be really disheartening and heartbreaking seeing them suffer unnecessarily, especially when you, you, you want to help them all the time. Unfortunately, any medication that's out there for hay fever 
is only really available for babies over one. Even the stuff that you can get over the counter and, and the best stuff you know that's out there, like Pyroton, is only licensed from babies 12 months and over. So here are my top baby safe tips on how to treat the symptoms of hay fever for your baby. Number one, regularly cleanse your baby's hands, face and hair with cold water to prevent any pollen from sticking to these areas. Number two, stick a wide brimmed hat on which will stop pollen hopefully settling on the eyes, the eyelashes and the eyebrows and stop the pollen from getting in the baby's hair. Number three, use hay fever specific wipes to help mop up all the pollen. We got these ones, hay fever relief wipes from Nuage. I think that's how you spell it, nuage, nuage. But you can get these in Superdrug. And actually, we've only just started using them and I've seen good results so far, but I think it will take a little bit longer to know whether they're actually doing any good, but it's worth trying because they're quite cheap for what they are um, and you usually get them on a deal, so give them a try. Number four, use a baby-friendly jelly or balm around the baby's nose to prevent pollen from entering the nostril. There are hay fever specific ones out there like Hay Max, but I personally just use Vaseline because it's cheap and easy to get hold of. And if you've seen my eco-friendly baby tips, then you'll know that I love a lanolin-based nipple cream and I use it for everything. But again, it's a really good way of putting it on the nostrils and, and around the nose to prevent the pollen, the pollen from entering that area. Number five, always check your pollen count before you go out for the day. So that just go on the, a weather app and just see if it's high, it's a good idea to stay indoors that day. And if you notice it's as high as say 50, I don't know what the units are, but 50, you can usually guarantee that your little one may suffer for the day and it's probably a good idea to stay inside. Number six, that said, in general, it's a good idea that if you do suspect hay fever, in your little one to just stay away from gardens, parks and farms and things like that. It's really difficult, especially if you're like us and you've got an older toddler where they want to go to all these things in the summer because they're the best places ever. And you've got to then tear yourself between staying inside and wanting to go out with your toddler and give them a run around. Number six, try and keep the windows shut in your house during high pollen count days. Now in the summers, it's actually really difficult to do because it's flipping hot and you want a bit of air to go through the house and you want to try and cool the house down. However, we've treated ourselves to an air conditioning unit, which I use to try and cool down the room for half an hour before bedtime, just to keep the rooms cool and save opening up all the windows and letting all the pollen in. So you could invest in an air purifying system to remove any of the pollen in the air in your baby's bedroom before they go to bed at night. I've been recommended by a friend to buy the Pro Breeze air purifier, and I think you can get it on Amazon. I haven't yet. Um, I think we might do if Aiden's hay fever symptoms get worse. So watch this space. I'll let you know how we get on. Number eight, if you do any washing of baby's bed sheets or clothes, make sure you dry them inside, either on an airer or an interval dryer if you have one, because outside on the line, unfortunately, attracts all the pollen and the pollen can stick to the clothes and then aggravate the symptoms. Again, not ideal because when it's glorious sunshine out there, all you want to do is hang the washing out and you know it will dry within half an hour. Number nine, an evening bath before bedtime can rinse off any of the pollen from the face, the body and the hair. Now, we don't usually wash Aiden's hair every night because it's a bit of a faff, it's getting a bit longer now, but during the hot and summer seasons, we will always wash it every night, even if it's just a rinse with warm water and a towel dry, just removing any of that pollen from his body and his hair to make sure that he gets a better night's sleep. So Aiden has been unfortunately suffering with hay fever really badly over the last week. At first I thought it was a cold because he was just getting the usual cold symptoms, a snotty nose, he was sneezing a lot. And because of lockdown here in the UK, he hasn't met many other babies or been in close contact with many other babies. And although his sister is bringing all sorts of bugs back from nursery, that's still not the same really as him coming into contact with other babies with colds and things. So because we started to go to baby groups and things like that, I actually naturally thought that he just had the common cold. 
but it wasn't until last week when I noticed that his eyes were getting really red. He was getting such bad bags underneath his eyes, which were swollen and crusted, and it looked like he had conjunctivitis. So I actually thought it was conjunctivitis. But then I realized that the conjunctivitis and the sneezing and the snot and everything was being severely aggravated every time we went out to say a park or a farm with my little girl and it, we would come back and it would be so much worse he would be suffering so badly with it and then we'd spend a couple of days close to home indoors inside and then it would get better and then we would go out again and it would aggravate it loads and get really bad again and this cycle kept happening for about 10 days and I noticed the symptoms weren't getting any better so I started to think oh my goodness he has hay fever and I had a feeling this might happen because he also has eczema patches all over his tummy which are quite nasty bless him so is he has allergic reactions of some sort to you know, an allergen. Um, we haven't been able to put it down specifically to what it is, whether it's food or dust mites or a certain product or we, we're not quite sure yet. We're just sort of taking our time and, and, and trying to figure out, we're doing keeping a food diary and things like that. So because of this, I thought, well, actually I would really benefit from making a video of this and doing a bit more research. And this is why I thought I would share this with you. Anyway, I hope you find that useful. I would appreciate a like if you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you want more updates on how Aiden is doing growing up. Um, please follow me on Instagram on my underscore parenting underscore way and I'll see you next time.